Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here. And today we're gonna to be learning how to actually use the electron drag and drop functionality so we can drag files into our application and handle them with electron. So without the further ado, let us get started. So inside of my index.html file in the renderer process of our app, I just have a div with an ID of drop zone and I'm styling that div by just setting a border, uh, three pixels, red, and basically just centering it um, horizontally in the page. Okay, and so in the render.js file, what we're gonna wanna do is get a reference to that value. So what we're gonna do by doing that is const drop zone is equal to documents.getElementById, and we're gonna get the drop zone. Next, to actually get um, and handle the events, for example, there's multiple events with drops. There's drag over, drop, um, stuff like that. We're gonna wanna handle them. So we're gonna do drop zone dot add event listener. We're gonna listen for the drag over events. We're gonna pass in the E for the events. And we're gonna do E dot stop propagation and E dot prevent defaults. And doing that will make sure that this works. Next, we're gonna do drop zone dot add event listener. And we're gonna listen for the drop events. And this event is fired when the file is finally released by the user releasing their mouse. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do e dot stop propagation and e dot prevent defaults. And then down here we have access to this event variable. Now at first glance, this event variable has a lot of information. So let's actually quickly run this and see all of the information that this contains. So we can see what we need to do with it, okay? So right here, I have my console, and over here, I have the draggable area. If I drag outside of the area, what you'll see is that nothing happens. In fact, I click here, boom, nothing happens. Um, but then, sorry about that, there we go. But say I click, Inside the area, watch what happens. We get a console.log, and it's a type of type drag events. And what we can do is we can get access to the X and Y position of the mouse, where we let go, the path, all of that stuff. But there's an important property in here called data transfer. And this has to do with the actual data that we um, have in here. So if I just clear this out real quick, what we can do is instead of console.logging E, Let's actually just um, get the files that are in that data transfer. So we'll do const files is equal to uh, e dot data transfer, and then we're gonna do dot files. And what you'll see is this is an array returns a file list of the files being dragged, if any. So what we can do now is do for const file of files. And this will give us access to each individual file. For example, I'm just gonna console.log the file.path, let's just do. You can see there's other stuff like type, text, stream, size, and yeah. So if we console.log the file.path, we should now be able to see each individual file we drop in. For example, if I drag this file right here, into here and go into the terminal, we'll get C, users, desktop, and then the PNG. If I drag all of these files into the app, actually, to, there we go. If I drag all of these into here, what you'll see is now we get a whole bunch of console.logs and they're all on the desktop, as you can see, these JPEGs. So that's very cool and all, but let's say I drag a folder in here, like this one right here, um, I'll bring it over here so you can see. It's just a folder for this project. What if I drag it in here? What you'll see is it's a folder, but we don't necessarily know that. So how do we determine if this is a folder or say a file or an executable? So what we can do is actually pass this path that we now have down to the main process where we can then interact with the file system directly using FS. So let's learn how we can do that. So um, I'm assuming you know at least a little bit about preload scripts. If you don't, I have multiple videos covering them and how we can do them. But we're basically going to create a 
um, IPC uh, function that's going to pass in a file name and return if it's a file or a directory. So let's do that. We're going to do is directory, or no, we'll, we'll call it is uh, file. And this takes in the path. And we're going to do IPC renderer dot uh, invoke. And we're going to say is a file. And what we'll do is we'll pass in the path. So this function is going to return a promise. And we can actually use that in here. So we can do const is, uh, const is path is equal to window.api dot is path or is a file. There we go. I didn't mean to do is path is file. And this window.api, we're getting that because it is window.api and then is file and we're passing in the file. So now we can actually get the file type. We just had to await this and we can actually get whether this file in particular is a file. For example, I'm going to just console.log file and is file. So we'll be able to determine if this is a file right here. So what we can do now is we have to actually listen for this event in the main process. To do that, we're going to go into our index.js. And if you can see up here, I did import file system already, and I brought in ls stat sync. So for demonstration purposes, we're just going to use ls stat sync, but I would highly recommend using um, non-synchronous versions when possible. So we're going to do ipc main.handle is file. And again, that's coming from right over here is file is the event we're listening on. And it's going to take in the handler and the arguments or the path. And we'll just async this. There we go. And we're simply just going to return ls stat sync of our path dot is file, which is a function that returns a boolean whether this is a file or not. So if the path we pass in is a file, it'll return true. And if not, it'll return false. And now we are done. We have our IPC main event listening for whether or not this is a file and it's just returning true or false. Um, we have our loop, which has all the files and we're doing that for all of these. Again, we're using a synchronous function with ls.sync. I don't recommend that, but it is a good way to demonstrate really quickly with uh, less lines of code. So that's what I'm gonna use. So when we restart the application, what you'll see is if we do control C and then NPM start, we can now, oh, so it says await is only valid in async functions. And the reason that is, is because in the renderer.js, there's, there's no async function, but what we can do is just pass async right here in front of this callback and that's fine. So now we can restart this and we'll get um, everything working fine. So there we go. Now what we can do is drag a singular file in. So I'll drag this 99810.jpg right in here and string. Oh, okay. One more error, but that's totally fine. Right here, it says the path argument must be of type string, but we got a buffer or a URL. The reason that is, is because right now, when we call this, we're passing in nothing. You notice how the parameter, we're supposed to pass in the file uh, path. So we could just do file.path. There we go. And lastly, that should work. So we can come in here drag that file, and what you see is we get this. It says our file, we have the path, the name, and the size and bytes. The type is image-jpeg, but most importantly, we see true. And what this means is if we now were to drop in, say, um, this GitHub desktop, this is also gonna be a file, so it's also gonna return true. Yep, there it is. And if we say drop in this folder right here, this will return false because this is not a file, it's a folder. And that is a brief, quick introduction to Electron.js's um, implementation of drag and drop functionality. 
If you found this video useful, please like, comment, subscribe. I also recently just started up a community Discord server that I will leave a link to in the description if you're interested. I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.